Here is a conversation I had with Dr. Marta Sammerman, director of the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research. Good morning, Dr. Sammerman, and thank you very much for coming and taking time off your busy schedule to answer some questions for our readership at the Journal of the American Dental Association. I would like to start to ask you a question about where NIDCR are right now. Could you highlight some trans translational research project presently sponsored by NIDCR that could directly help practitioner and benefit patients? Um, sure, that's a very interesting question and uh, maybe I would uh, take a moment to bring that up back a little bit. So what NIDCR funds is uh, basic research, translational and clinical, where it's really very, very important to have that basic research as the foundation of where to move to the translational and clinical. Having said that, um, there are several examples, and there are numerous ones, in terms of the direct and also indirect that eventually becomes direct. So for example, in the commentary that uh, the, uh, leadership, the uh, readership will be um, involved with um, is, uh, relates to uh, one example was osteonecrosis of the jaw. And here's an example where the practitioners were the first to recognize that there was something related to drugs that are anti-resorptive anti drugs and uh, increased incidence of osteonecrosis of the jaw. And by gathering um, groups together, uh, practitioners clearly able to demonstrate that there was a correlation, although it's minimal and these drugs are very important, um, that, there, that there was a correlation between osteonecrosis of the jaw and some of these anti-resorptive drugs. What that then enabled us to do was go back to the basic science level to address the mechanism, which is so critical. Um, another um, example which really tags on to that is related to the practice-based research networks, where, again, we're asking questions that are in the real world, where the dentists are posing the questions of needing more immediate or direct answers for our patients, uh, which is what we're all about is the uh, care of the patients. And so a wonderful example is the tooth crack program, uh, the tooth crack study, where this is a program of evaluating uh, patients that are symptomatic and asymptomatic over a four-year period, where uh, trying to establish when these cracks become symptomatic and also by a variety of follow-ups of being able to identify risk factors uh, for susceptibility and long-term treatments. Another wonderful example is our small business uh, program where frequently we are involved in funding the basic science and perhaps not moving into the small business but at other times moving from the, the basic science actually to the clinical level and clinical trials into uh, development of the products. A wonderful example here relates to the area of wound healing, where at the clinical level, where at the basic science level, the researchers uh, developed an animal model where they recognized that if they took away a specific gene, these animals wouldn't heal, recognizing that this factor or molecule was important and involved in wound healing. Subsequently, that same group of researchers formed a company. This was also uh, uh, funded by NIDCR in terms of a uh, small business program involvement. And we're hoping to have that move in through this company that we're sponsoring, that we're funding, um, into clinical trials. So those are just a few of the many, many examples that we have. Thank you. You mentioned your commentary in our February issue of the Journal of the American Dental Association. And in there you say, NIDCR's aim is to make faster progress in improving oral health by integrating the domains of dentistry and research. Could you please elaborate on this point for us? What we do is a very good job as researchers of, um, of the disseminating information between each other through meetings, through collaborative efforts, through publications in journals, but frequently those are not the journals that are read by practitioners or very few practitioners. And therefore, an area that needs more focus and emphasis 
relates to getting the information from the practitioners. They see millions of patients. And through those millions of patients that they see, they recognize situations that perhaps are different, where individuals or patients respond differently than others. And what we need at NIDCR is to get that information from the practitioners back to the research arena to address research questions related to their new findings and new areas of exploration together. So we really need the practitioners involved at all levels of what we're doing. Thank you. And my last question, trying to look a little bit into the future, uh, could you envision what NIDCR might actually fund 10, 15 years from now? Um, what a, what a, a lovely question and one that we all like to, um, we enjoy answering, but you never know uh, where we're going. But it's clear with the exponential uh, growth in tools and technologies and with the area of genetics, genomics, and uh, precision medicine that it's no longer one gene, one protein, it's no longer one researcher in a silo lab. So in terms of the future, it's going to be much more multidisciplinary in what we fund. And for a, a wonderful example of this relates to uh, the intersection of immunology and almost everything. But let me give you an example in terms of uh, the microbiome project, of recognizing that the, the uh, bacteria associated with all parts of our body and how they interact with the immune system really sets up our health, our disease, our immune response. An example of the immunolog immunological advances is in the area of cancers now, where we're now recognizing uh, the importance and significance of regulating of the immune system in cancers and, in fact, targeting, targeting drugs in this area. Another wonderful exa example is in the area of health disparities where we can no longer work in silos in addressing the gaps in health disparities. And of course, as our populations are living longer, of moving this into the adult arena as well in addressing health disparities. So I could see a huge vast of areas of arenas um, that are multidisciplinary that will be um, enhanced in the future as we move forward in terms of the research projects and areas. So much of the research may be similar themes, but uh, much more um, all hands on board. And in, this will include the practitioners, where we must go back to the practitioners and have them involved in the basic research side of this as well. Dr. Summerman, thank you very much for taking your time to answer these questions. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I am delighted and honored um, to be here.